fitz hugh curtis syndrome right and it is asking what is the most common organism for this options are n gonorrhea infection chlamydia trachomatis orensia sutsugamusi and rhizopus right okay so what is fitz hugh curtis syndrome fitz hugh curtis syndrome is a form of perihepatitis it's a form of peri hepatitis now when i say peri hepatitis what does that mean patient is developing infection and inflammation of the liver capsule without the liver parenchymal involvement if parenchyma is involved i would as well call it as hepatitis right it's called as peri hepatitis because only capsule is infected so liver function tests are essentially going to be normal in these patients right now why these patients are developing infection what is the source of infection right so this peri hepatitis is a result of ascending infection from pid so patient would have already developed pelvic inflammatory disease pelvic inflammatory disease right from here the ascending infection through peritoneal cavity or through lymphatics reaches the liver capsule and causes peri hepatitis now this pid or pizu curtis syndrome the pid as such and the peri hepatitis are is often associated with exudative secretions so because of these exudative secretions even inside of the pelvis there will be a lot of adhesions that can cause various uh, manifestations including infertility in a female and at the level of liver this peri hepatitis can cause adhesions to surrounding structures and that can sometimes involve intestine so patient can sometimes present with intestinal obstruction clear yeah. peri hepatitis presenting with intestinal obstruction now what are the causes for this ascending pid which is known to cause fitzhugh curtis syndrome n gonorrhea is one right n gonorrhea is one and the other one is your chlamydia trachomatis right so option a and b are correct answers but the question is asking most common right so most common is chlamydia trachomatis in fact chlamydia trachomatis is the most common cause for pelvic inflammatory disease much more common than your n gonorrhea right so that is why that becomes our right answer chlamydia trachomatis is the right answer for this question okay now what are the additional points you need to know about fitzhugh curtis syndrome right so you might hear this particular term called as violin string violin string adhesions right whenever mcq talks about violin string adhesions please think about fitzhugh curtis syndrome violin string adhesions as i have told you there will be exudative secretions and they can bring in adhesions right so when you see these adhesions under the laparoscope or through the imaging it might look like the strings of violin that's why it's called as violin string adhesions right so look at this image these are the adhesions liver capsule liver parenchyma unaffected and exudation development of adhesions right so particularly when seen through the laparoscope it looks like this right so surface of liver surrounding structures development of adhesions which look like the strings of a violin right you can literally compare it it looks like the strings of the violin that's why it's called as violin string adhesions okay now coming to treatment of these patients how do we treat well we have to eradicate the infection and if adhesions are a problem if adhesions are a problem we have to do surgical adhesionolysis so surgery is left to surgeons coming to the medical management what is the drug of choice right so drug of choice is doxycycline 100 mg pd for 7 days that is a drug of choice for treatment of chlamydia trachomatis pid so you give antibiotics for 7 days and if adhesions are already there and they are causing the manifestations because of that then go ahead with the surgical additional lysis which is very often carried through laparoscopic approach today 